Hey everyone, we are back with more of GameFest 2. Let's get right into it. I saw a couple of games coming up which I rather like, which I thought were pretty good games. Uh, but before I go back to where I left off, uh, so where did we end off last time? We had just, yeah, I just showed off uh, the, uh, wait, is it showed off or shown off? Hmm. I had presented the uh, demo for Commander Keen 6. Um, and the next game will be Orion Odyssey, but just before I do that, somebody did mention that they um, were a little regretful that I skipped over Overkill. And I know they said after that, they said in a later comment, there's no need to go back, but I mean, hey, if uh, if somebody wants to, if, if somebody has positive memories associated with this game, if uh, somebody likes this game, sure, why not? I mean, it's, it's not a bad game. It's just... Um, was it wasn't for me it wasn't something that uh really that i felt a great need to uh to present but let's see video mode uh so we can do four color 16 color or 1000 series um okay um would you like to have colors or would you like to have series? I prefer colors. I'll choose EJVJ16 color. Epic Mega Games in cooperation with Precision Software or something. Ooh, ad lib music. When did this start? I, I, I remember this. I recall this game having. Uh... Oh right, the sound effects are PC speaker, and the music is uh, is ad lib. Wow. Okay, let's, uh, let's see, let's play. Uh, I have a keyboard. Um, yes, we have both music and sound effects. Awesome. Instructions and credits, because why not? Okay, this is page one, page two, page three, page four, and page five. As they say on the internet today, TLDR. So, um, how do I start? Oh, fire equals start. Uh, I guess, okay, seems like space bar is fire. So we have six episodes here. I guess. Uh... Oh hey, oh difficulty level. There's easier, normal, and holy cow. Let's do easier. Okay. Let's try this. A lightly defended industrial planet, the first museum by the aliens. Okay, let's do it. I am ready. Oh, I see. It's, uh... You can hold down the space bar and it works, but it goes, it fires much faster if you just keep pressing the space bar, like, uh, like you, uh, let's see, oh, I see, yeah, yeah, yeah. Oops, it is, oh dear. That was not a good thing to do. That was definitely the wrong thing to do. I'm, I'm apparently not very good at this game. It's kind of like a more smooth scrolling version of Major Striker. I think it was more into Major Striker though, just because of the uh, just because of the blue haired anime woman in it. Which again just goes to show you. How, uh, how desperate some people are for, uh, I don't know. Let's not get into that now. Let's, let's just play Overkill. Uh, whoops. Oh, I, I appear to have blown up. Well, that's okay because I have been resurrected as another ship. I get the feeling I'm not very good at this game. I mean, this is it's quite an easy first level, obviously, so it's not that difficult, but uh, am I supposed to shoot those things? Because if you shoot the caps off these water pipes, they start shooting little, uh, little water balloons at you, which hurts. Maybe I'm just supposed to keep them bottled up. Maybe I'm not supposed to shoot them open. I don't know. Anyway, um... I mean, this game reminds me a lot of Major Striker because it uh, came out around the same time. 
and obviously has very similar presentation. The difference being that the sound effects are PC speaker. I guess that was a super thing to do to try to shoot out those, uh, those asteroids. I don't know why I keep shooting the caps off those water pipes. I should probably just leave them on. I should probably not try to shoot that, those asteroids when they come. It looks like that was a mistake. I should probably try to dodge the asteroids rather than trying to shoot them out. I am just getting tired of constantly pressing the space bar to shoot. I bet you could probably set up DOS box to, uh, to auto fire. You could, I'm sure you could set up DOS box to, uh, to auto fire with the space bar. Well, I'm not sure, but I, I imagine you probably could. Yeah, dodging these asteroids rather than. Okay. I, I, just, I was just about to say dodging these asteroids rather than trying to shoot them is apparently the way to go, and then I died from an asteroid, so. Oh, oh I see those, those water pipes still shut at you, shoot at you even if, even if you leave them intact. Uh, let's go ahead and crash catastrophically into the side there. Okay, that was overkill. Oh, well done, you have achieved a high score. Please enter your name now. Uh... Okay, done. There you go. That was overkill from Epic, from Epic Mega Games. Uh, not a bad game, just kind of, you know, I mean, it's a generic space shooter in my opinion. It's fairly, uh... I don't know, I always saw it as fairly unremarkable. Um, not not a bad game by any means, it just doesn't really stick out in my memory. Even, um, what's the other one? Um, oh man, I can't believe I forgot the name of it now. Um, oh, I'm getting old. What's the name of that other vertical scrolling shooter from um, from Epic Mega Games that, that everybody loves because it's... Um, I feel like it starts with a T. Oh, man. Tyrion. That's the one, isn't it? Yeah, I'm pretty sure it's Tyrion. Um, yeah, that, that shooter, which is really, it's, it's one of the best vertical scrolling shooters ever released for the PC. It has, uh, it has a huge number of levels and power-ups and things like that. It has lots of different environments and, and enemies and things like that, and the music. And it's, I mean, it's, it's a lot bigger and longer and more, more in-depth than most vertical scrolling shooters. And even that game, uh, one of the best, like I said, one of the best vertical scrolling shooters ever made for PC. Even that game to me is just kind of... Meh. I mean, yeah, okay. It's it's a good game. I mean, it's fun. It has a it has a huge story too. Like between every level, there are like twenty pages of story that you have to read, or you don't have to read, and you can skip them, but then you won't know what's going on. Um, and even that game to me is just kind of you know. It's, I mean, it's it's a vertical scrolling shooter. You move the ship around and you shoot at things. It's it's a fun game, but there are tons of games like that. Anyway, um. Here we go. Uh, Orion Odyssey 3.0. So this game is, I think, I realize I'm kind of a game hipster uh, because you know I, I kind of say bad things about games like um, like Overkill and Tyrion, even though they're great games. I kind of badmouth them just because they're they're kind of generic, you know. And then you have games like this one. Uh, how can I? Yeah, Odyssey. Let's do that. There are games like the Orion Odyssey, which I have actually featured on my channel before. I remember made, I made another video where, um, I forget what I was talking about now. It was probably one of my hugely long rambling videos where I was talking forever about something that I forget what it was now. Um, and this is, yeah, this is the kind of game that, that I get excited about because it's not a good game by any means, but it's original. It has a very unique sort of um, perspective. It has a unique sort of gameplay style, which I don't think I've seen in any other game before. It's actually, it's not even that unique, but just well, let's run it and uh, let's run it and see. Um, yeah, so here you go. This Oh, that's going a little fast there. I should probably s slow down DOS box. All right, let's try it now. Yeah, that looks, looks better. So it's kind of like, it's kind of like uh, a platformer, except you've got this jetpack, 
And then you, you might say, okay, well, it's kind of like Jetpack, right? But it's not. I mean, just look at it. It's, it's, it's nothing like Jetpack. It's, I mean, Jetpack is a great game, nothing against Jetpack, but it's nothing like this. And I don't think I've ever seen a game like this, a game that does this kind of thing. It reminds, it reminds me a little bit of Captain Comic, except it's, it's way different from Captain Comic because Captain Comic didn't have a jetpack. When has there ever been a platformer like this with a jetpack, which you can just use to fly around in like this? I, I mean, again, I don't think I've ever seen the likes of this game. Um, I also don't think I ever got very far in this game because despite it being um despite it's being very original it's it's admittedly it's not very good i mean okay i'll go ahead and, oh i picked up a sword there i wonder what that does yeah i'll freely admit despite it being very original and really unique um uh, it's just it's just not very good oh i died that's nice Oh, those uh, three bars at the top are my lives, so I have two lives left, I guess. The two blue ones are my two remaining lives, and the black one is the one that I just lost. So, I mean, here we are inside a house, and then here we are inside uh, whatever this is, and this is where you can get more fuel for your jetpack, and that thing just crashed into my head and exploded, and I survived it because I'm cool like that. Well, actually, it damaged my health quite significantly. Um... I should probably be shooting at these things instead of just flying into them. Yeah, control. Control shoots, but I can't shoot that thing because it's below my... Oh, there we go. It was below my shot path, but I got it. So yeah, I mean... What you see is what you get. Someday I should probably... I think this is the kind of game that I would like to play with DOSBox down with uh, a DOSBox that has save, sta save states in it, because playing this uh, correctly and dying constantly would be enormously frustrating. But if you had save states for this or at least speaking for myself, if I had save states for this, I think I could have a lot of fun with this. I should I should do that. I should really play this game sometime with save states, because I've never played it properly. I've actually never really tried to get through this game. I always just started it, played it for about five or ten minutes, and said, wow, this game looks really cool. That lo really looks like a fantastic game that I'd like to that I'd like to get into sometime. And then I never actually got into it. It's kind of like, um, you know, it's just one of those things that you always wanted to do, but it just seems a little daunting and a little, like... Like, you'd need to set aside a lot of time to do it properly. Yeah, I remember this room. This room is kind of creepy, this crazy dungeon with... Oh, yeah, with that door that just spontaneously just opens. Does it, does it open when I step... Oh, I see. It opens when I step away from it. And then as I try to get closer to it... Yeah, okay. So, um... And for some reason, I always like these games that, that show the, the, the name of the game and the author's name and even the address and where to send your registration fee to. I like games that, that show that on the actual screen of the game. I mean, yeah, there's probably a README file accompanying the game where you can find that information, but I just always find it kind of kind of interesting when there's, you know, when the game is basically taking place within a, a window within, uh, you know, an information screen where you actually get information about the game. Something about this game reminds me of Broticus. I wonder how many of you remember Broticus that... Uh, old game for the Atari ST, which is one of Cygnosis' first games. That was a, that was also a very experimental game, but it wasn't as good as this. I mean, I think I said this game is not very good, which I guess, I, guess it, I mean, it's not excellent, but I think this is better than Broticus. Broticus was really very frustrating. It had terrible controls. Uh, and I mean, this game, you know, the controls in this game aren't fantastic, but they're, they're, they're definitely serviceable in my opinion. They're definitely, um, you know, I mean, I'm not, I don't notice any glaring control issues, so it uh, seems to seems to work out. At least it works for me pretty well. I guess it's a matter of opinion, no accounting for taste, right? But yeah, this is the Orion. Oh, here we go. We can get ammo here. That's nice. Nice. He's good. I like. Anyway, um, I don't know where I'm supposed to go from here, so I'll just go ahead and quit. I guess I can just press escape to quit. No? Oh, yes, okay. Quit, save, start game, or start over, or never mind. Uh, okay, quit to DOS. There we go. Oh, you even uh, get a little, uh, little uh, status report at the end. So hits is seven, and shots fired is... Okay, so I guess I fired 51 shots, and 
seven of my shots hit something, so the percentage is 13, okay? Due to the size of the variety of the can only be distributed with one, with one of the eight worlds. Wow, there are eight worlds in this. And it's only 10 bucks. I mean, 10 bucks doesn't seem bad for something like this. If, if Billy Dalrymple programmed this all by himself, then my hat's off to you, Billy. Uh, you are really... I mean, you really, you really made a nice game. You really, I, I really think you really did a good job. I mean, again, it, there are some issues with it, obviously, but it's just, it's so, it, it's, it has that, that wonderful sort of artistic touch. It has that touch. It has the feel of a game, which, um, you know, which somebody really put a lot of effort into. You have that, that artisan feel. It's not a game that was made by a big studio. It's a game that was made by an artist, by one, one person working alone in their spare time, perhaps. Anyway, I like that game. I mean, I'm, I, I, I give it a thumbs up and I recommend it to anybody who, uh, who likes what they see. But the next game here is a very different game, but it's also, uh, this is a game that I have some positive memories about. Um, I think Pushing Up Roses did a, a, a video about this game as well, where she said basically the same thing. She said, you know, it's she had some good memories about it. She played it again for a few minutes and yeah, it's a fun game, but the, the thrill wears off fairly quickly. So let's see, let's go ahead and see uh, what it's all about. I'll just say S Goose or Star Goose, four words. Um, helps if I can type properly. Uh, so S Goose, yeah. This is another thing I like, no installation, just an EXE. You copy the EXE and a couple of data files, you run the EXE, bam, you're in the game. Star Goose, designed by S. Kane and G. Everett, programming by C. Parrot. Graphics by S. Kane, published by Logotron, copyright 1988. Star Goose! Yeah! Let's play. Let's go. Alright, so, uh, this could actually, is this... I was gonna say, is this running too fast in DOSBox, but I think... I think the speed is actually inappropriately, uh... I think the speed is inappropriately, um, varying, uh, with regard to how many things are on the screen. Oh, do I have, oh, I have limit, oh, I have limited ammo, duh. The, the word ammo, the word ammo in the lower left reflects how much ammo I have. The, the green part is how much ammo I have left and the pink part is how much ammo I used to have. So I'm actually already almost out of ammo. Uh, oh, I need to be going faster to get these things here. What are these things anyway? Is that fuel or shield or ammo? Maybe it's all of them. Wait, why did I die there? What happened? Why did I die? What, what did I hit? I didn't hit. There was nothing there to hit. I don't get it. I don't get it. All right, whatever. Um, are those pickups or, oh. I thought these might be pickups, but I think they were some kind of landmines or something like that. All right, whatever. Let's uh, pick up these spheres, and those are some kind of pickups of something. I don't know what. Um, whoops, that was another landmine. Oh, yeah, let's get some shield. That's a good idea. I definitely could use some shield here. What? How did I... What? Oh, that thing shoots rockets. Did I die from just one rocket? It's a little ridiculous. Um, okay, I don't need ammo, so maybe I can just, can I just go past the ammo thing instead of going into it? Or do I have to go inside the ammo thing? Okay. Well, I guess you can do that. Okay, you can, you can run off the side of the play field and, and die horribly. Um, let's try, let's try once more. Let me speed up DOSBox. I actually... When I first ran this, I thought DOSBox might be running it too fast, but now I think it might be that DOSBox was just a touch too slow. Or maybe I'm wrong, who knows. Let's see, do I need to pick that up, or... I don't know, I don't know what that does. So yeah, this is another... I mean, it's, it's as I said at the beginning. It's the kind of game that you would play for maybe... Whoops. Am I supposed to run into that thing? I'm not sure. I really, I don't know the controls for this game. I don't know anything about this game. I don't know anything. What is my life? Who are people? What is... Uh... What is anything, really? Why are we here at all? Why am I here at all? Why Why did I get into this Stargo spaceship? And, and why did it blow up there again? I don't understand. What happens there? There must be some reason for that. I don't know, man. I'm so confused. I don't know what's going on anymore. 
I just came here to play Star Goose. I just came here to play great shareware games, which I guess is what I'm doing. I mean, this is a nice game. I do like the game. I just have no idea what I'm doing, sadly. Oh, that's probably a missile. Okay, the shield thing you can go around. The ammo thing you can't go around, but the shield thing you can go around as I just did there. And this thing, okay. Yeah, that thing kills you very quickly because it one miss. Okay, so that appears to be a one hit kill. That missile kills you right away. How are you supposed to dodge that? What are you supposed to do? Because the missile comes, it, the missile shows up quite, uh, the missile moves quite quickly and my starboard thing doesn't actually. Maybe if, maybe I can just outrun it. There we go. Whoops, that was the that was the wrong way to go. Okay. Oh, I got more points than last time though. I guess that's a victory of sorts. All right. How do I get out of here? Can I please quit? Yes. Control Q quits. For future reference, pressing Control Q brings up the prompt asking you if you want to quit, and then you press Y for yes. Let's go back and continue. So yeah, Star Goose, a very simple game. It has no instructions, so that explains partially why I have no idea what I'm doing in that game. But it's fun. Somehow it's fun, even though I have no idea what I'm doing. So there you go, Star Goose. Not a bad game. Good, good for five minutes of fun. Okay, here's the Endorian Tales. Oh boy. Um, this is going to take forever. Um, let's see, what else do we have here? Tactical Battle Simulator. Does anyone recall that being a rather, uh, rather, it says great graphics. I remember quite the opposite. Conquest, a strategy game similar to Risk. Modern problems, get puzzles and logic and reflexes. Loader Larry, Power Trooper Bob. Yeah, the rest of the games here are all uh, fairly, yeah, okay. Let's go ahead and run Yandorian Tales. I have a feeling... You know what? None of these games here after this really, really appeal to me very much. So I might actually just skip over the rest of the EGA games. Well, may, I should probably do at least Loader Larry and Paratrooper Bob. Those are two nice games. I'm, I might show those off briefly, but other than those, maybe I can just skip through the rest of this. Okay, but I'll, I'll go ahead and show off Yandorian Tales, and that'll probably be the rest of the video because Yandorian Tales, this game takes forever to. Uh, uh, to do anything with, it's it's a it's a nice game. I actually like the game. I do like uh, this uh, this game, but it's it's an RPG, and you know how it is with RPGs. RPGs they just take. Ooh, what does the BBS note say? Let's see. Type BBS note. Um, okay. I don't have a, a file viewer here to see what what shows up at the top of the screen there, but okay, that's fine. That's it's not really a BBS note. It's more like a. And, and uh, uh, I, I don't know. I don't know how you'd describe it. Anyway, let's go ahead and unzip the... Uh, yeah. See, so first of all, that's a, that's a self-extract... Okay, so the game comes in this EXE self-extracting executable, but the self-extracting executable itself contains zip files. So now I'm going to have to... Actually, it, it looks like there's... Oh, I see. There's a BBS inst. Does this actually install it? Okay, BBS installation has finished. Wow. Um, uh, that doesn't. It, it, okay, I see some warnings saying warning can't create, so it looks like whatever happened didn't actually work correctly. Maybe I should try this. Man, it's been a while since I've used PK unzip from the command line. What's the switch to. Yeah, minus D retains the directory structure, otherwise, everything just gets unzipped into the current folder. So let's do PK unzip minus d and then data dot zip okay and then prog dot zip well it's a lot of prog something dot exes yeah this game is a very messy uh, file structure as you can see uh what am i supposed to even run here uh do i have a com file here no do i have what, what do we have for exes okay i'll try running yendor one that's probably what we want Wait, no, that no, that's the uh, that's the extractor. That's the thing that I. Okay, how do I? Is it S W? Please run the install program first. Okay, what do we have here for install pro? Oh, install.exe. Okay. Um. Wow. Really? Seriously? Um. Can I say? Um, I mean, 
I used to get around this problem with subs, but actually I don't know if Oh, there we go. It actually Oh, it actually was smart enough to uh to figure out cuz C Endor is not actually a real path, it's a virtual path under my DOSBox GameFest2 uh, directory, but it was smart enough to realize that it actually... Let's see then, so if we come here to drive A, will it think this is a floppy disk now? It does! It actually thinks it's a floppy disk because it's drive A, that's pretty awesome. Okay, disk drive is C, I can choose C or D, well D is the, uh, the GameFest CD, so I'll leave it on C. Video mode, there's only one video mode, why is that even an option then? Mouse, can be enabled or disabled, sure has to use the mouse. Sound card, oh it's not implemented, that's nice. And description. Wait, can I type in any description I want? Uh, apparently, I can. I wonder. I wonder what this will do to the game if I install using this. Let's give it a try. Um, okay, I think the disc should already be in the. What do you mean? That's the wrong disc. Wow. Um, I hate this kind of thing. I, this, this is one thing I really don't miss about old games is games that came on a bunch of floppies and then they expect you to have the game still on floppies so they don't work if you just copy everything to a hard drive and try to run it. It, it will actually like complain at you if, if all the game's files are in one folder and say, no, this isn't the floppy disk that I require to uh, install the, the files with. Yeah, that's... That's kind of upsetting. Um, I wonder if it's even worth the effort of trying to trying to get this running because I do like this game. I'll just describe it. it it's a top-down RPG, kind of like Ultima. Um, I mean, it doesn't have. I actually, I have to be honest. I like it better than Ultima. Uh, I think most people wouldn't, but I like this one better than Ultima because it's it's a little more. It's a little more focused on. Uh, I don't know. It, it has more of what I like in games and less of what I don't like in games, which, um, I don't know, I, I could probably, if I was playing the game, I could probably define a little more definitely what that is, but, um, yeah. I don't know. It's Yeah, it's kind of like Ultima. It's kind of like a freeware, or not freeware, kind of like a shareware Ultima clone, sort of. I guess you can think of it that way. That probably describes it fairly succinctly. Maybe I'll try to get it running later in the future. I don't know, just to show it off, but... Um, all right. Well, since we have a little more time, I, mean, I guess I guess I could end the video here. But let's see what else did we have here under EGA games. Maybe we can just finish off the EGA games section. Um, so after Yandorian Tales comes Tactical Battle Simulator. That unless somebody really wants to see it, you know what? I'm just gonna skip over that because I remember that being such a such a bad game. Or maybe I just wasn't good at it. I think probably the problem was I didn't know how to play it, and then I, I convinced myself that I didn't know how to play it because it was such a bad game, rather than admitting that I just didn't know how to play. So, uh, strategy game similar to Risk. I mean, again, a board game. Nothing against board games. Sure, I've played Risk. Risk is fun, but uh, I think uh, I think we can move on to other things. Modern Problems. I remember this being quite a... Let's Let's just check this quickly. I seem to recall this being quite a uh, quite a bad game, uh, or, or not necessarily a bad game, but just really unremarkable. Um, yeah. Okay. Um, um, okay. Um, Okay, let's play. All right. Yeah. Let's see, I don't know what. Hold on. Is this the game? Is this the game already, or um, I don't know. Um, oh, I was gonna say, how do I play the game? And then I didn't realize at the bottom there's a huge button, or not a huge button, but a button that just says game. I guess you click on game. Okay, we have game. Inside out. Worm can't go over the bricks. Uh, uh, what, what, what's going on? Wait, is this? Oh, is this like Pipe Dream? It's, it's kind of like Pipe Dream, sort of. I guess. 
oh, I see. And the, on the right, it shows you what you're going to have next. So it's kind of like, kind of like Tetris in that you can see. Okay, I get it. Uh, does the worm turn around? Oh, it does. Okay, that's nice. Okay, I get the idea. So you're just supposed to keep putting these blue things down and prevent the worm from hitting the white bricks. And it just keeps going like this forever, I guess. So you just basically keep doing this until until you run out of space or the worm dies or you make it accidentally hit something. I don't know. I don't really know what's what's uh, what's going on here. Oh, I won. That's nice. I'm looking over. Okay. Is that the whole game, or are there... It looked to me like there are various different ways to play this game. Is the game really just about a worm crawling over these blocks, or is there something else to it? I don't know. I don't know. Um... This seems a little better than I remember, but that might just be because I kind of figured out how to play, or at least I kind of guessed how to play the first level, which I guess is, is something. Well, if, I, if you click on help... Yeah, see, so worm puzzles is just one type of puzzle. Over here on the right, they have different types of puzzles. So there's gap war. Okay, so there's, yeah, this is something to do with gap war, which is, I guess, a war between different clothing chains. Quantum boxes are something that I guess Stephen Hawking was researching. Clues and hints. Um, I don't know, maybe a mastermind thing. Demons. I don't know. Scoring. It's probably not a game, but it actually... Oh, I'm lost. <laughs> so, if you're reading this... We didn't do a very good job at teaching you all you needed to know to enjoy the game. It's difficult knowing what to tell you and what to let you figure out for yourself. Wow, this is getting philosophical. This these, this instruction uh, screen for the game is really starting to get into the details about uh, about game design and how people relate to, to video games. Um, the purpose of this topic is to help you get your bearings in the game when all else fails. We will attempt to do this by making several statements concerning the game. Some of the statements may seem obvious to you immediately, while other statements will only seem obvious later because of 2020 hindsight. Some of the statements will tell you to go, to go find information elsewhere. Um, I don't think this is helping people get less lost. If somebody's lost and clicks on this, I'd, I, I'm not sure that this uh, information, as as pleasant as the tone is, I don't think this is helping people get less lost. Uh, <laughs> you, we recommend that these statements be read a page at a time or until you no longer feel lost. You know, if you turn later, click next page to, to continue your journey. Um, wow. Oh, that was it. I'm lost was three pages, and you're supposed to be not lost after that. Um, I'm going to go ahead and quit. That was... That was modern pro... What is this? I'm assuming the guy on the right is the programmer of the game. Is the person on the left the same person with some kind of palette swap, or is that a different person? I don't know. How do we get out of this? Okay, press... I can just press any key. Um, yeah, modern problems. It is indeed a modern problem. I don't know. I, I probably just don't understand how it works. Um, but those those instructions, man. Wow, those instructions were uh, were the highlight of my day for sure. Okay, that was modern problems. Uh, I'm not going to say anything more about that. Loader Larry. This is another um, solo software game. Um, for some reason, I always liked this one more than most of uh, William Solo's games. I don't know why. This is just... Uh, Maybe because rather than being a game that incorporates elements of chance or things like that, this is really just a pure puzzle game. So let's go ahead and take a look. So you can read this introduction if you want. He, uh, Larry Lontros has lived his whole life in Longview. I think that's deliberately alliterative. Um, yeah, I'll just skip over. Okay, I mean, you don't really need a story for game. It's nice that they put in a story. It's it's really nice that William Solo wrote this story for the game. I, I do appreciate that, uh, but I'm going to go ahead and spare you folks uh, reading the story now. 
this is telling you how to play the game, uh, but let's just, yeah, start with puzzle one. So the, the principle here is very simple. It's kind of like Sokoban in that you have these boxes and you have to, whoops, that was wrong. You have to move the boxes around and you want to get, um, um, actually, no, I was going to say you want to get them all into one place, but that's actually not true. You don't want to get them all into one place. You just want to get to the exit. So it's actually not like Sokoban, because in Sokoban, you want to, uh, you, your goal is to push all the boxes into a certain space, whereas here your goal is just to get to the exit. That's it. Larry's job description is part-time loader, and you're supposed to get promoted all the way to president. And how do you get promoted to president? By getting to the exit, because that's what successful company presidents do. They make it to the exit of whatever room they're in. That's what it takes to be a successful company president. There you go, folks. All you need to know about business success. You learn it. You learn it here when you're uh, when you're CEO of of the world's biggest corporation. Remember, don't forget the little people. Don't remember where you don't don't forget where you where you learned your your business sense, folks. Anyway, this is Loader Larry. It's I mean, it's not a bad game at all. It's uh, it's kind of fun. It's uh, I like it. Uh, I just don't. Uh, Let's see, what do I do with these balloons? Do I? Oh, you know what? Hold on. How do I start again? A for again. There we go. You have to, yeah, you have to press down to push the balloons down. And then you have to push them along like that. That's right. There we go. And get the dynamite. Don't forget the dynamite. That's obviously important. So, and yeah, just push the balloons along and... Um... Did I, uh, oh wait, I, I, oh wait, this is where the TNT becomes useful. Press T for TNT and you can press left or right. I'll press left. And Larry very cleverly stands right in front of the dynamite. He doesn't run away. He just stands in front of it and holds his ears and thinks that'll protect him. And apparently he did because he survived without any apparent injuries. Now you press up and press right. And there we go. All right. I thought I might have gotten promoted by now, but apparently I didn't. Anyway, I'll go and quit out of this. This is Loader Larry. Um, how do I quit? Uh. Uh. Um. Oh. I guess in-game. You have to wait until you're in-game, and then you can press Q to quit. Oh, these little bridges. They're quite a pain because they crumble after you walk over them, which doesn't seem very safe. I think OSHA might have something to say about that. Anyway, Q to quit. Quit Loader Larry? Yes. All right. Uh, all right. So yeah, that was Loader Larry. Um, I like that game. I think that's one of my favorite uh, solo software games uh, out of the many, many games that I've seen from him over the years because, as, as I say every time, he, he made a lot of games. Uh, okay, and after Loader Larry came another uh, solo software game. Yes, Paratrooper Bob. Now, this game is interesting to me mostly because it was later removed from uh, Solo Software's catalog. And I think the reason for that is the violence. It's not terribly violent. I mean, by video game standards, it's it's hardly anything at all. But well, let's go ahead and um, take a look, and I'll, I'll show you what it looks like. So yeah, Paratrooper Bob, bob1.exe. Paratrooper Bob one shouldn't he shouldn't land on a spike. That's that's a bad thing. Like what was just about to happen there. So uh, yeah, see, there's even an option for violence, so you can turn violence on and off. But uh, I'll play with it on so you can see uh, what it's like. And we'll start with drill number one. So the premise here is fairly simple. Paratrooper Bob needs to parachute out of one of these three things here. So see the three arrows at the top? I'm using the arrow keys to switch between them. Let's go ahead and have him parachute out of this thing. And uh, what did that do? Whoops. Okay, I think that wasn't what I will. I think that wasn't what I wanted to do. Yeah, there you go. That's what I mean by violence. See. The, the the standard of violence here is so so minimal compared to what you would see in any uh, any modern shooter, but you know I mean 
it's a little gory for what is supposed to be a puzzle game. And Solo Software being a company that specialized in these sort of family-friendly puzzle games, I guess this is why they removed the game from their catalog. I mean, they could have just made it less violent. They could have just somehow, you know, they could have taken away the, the bloody graphics and just replaced them with a screen saying, uh, uh, you lose, play again, or something like that. But uh, but no, they, as far as I know, they removed this uh, for sale. You can't get it. You can't buy it from the company anymore. So I guess what I was supposed to do is this, and then... Can I just... Oh, there we go. Oh, gold too early. Really? Okay, so you need to actually... Is that right? Okay, so you need to actually have him paratroop out of all three of those things. Okay, I see. So you do this. All right, I get it. All right, drill completed successfully. That was drill one. Drill two... Um... Okay, fair enough. I think that was the wrong one to start with, because now... Yeah. Yeah. There we go. Okay, that was clearly not what I was supposed to do. Okay, I'll press X to exit. And again, X to exit, and a third time, X to, X to exit. That was Paratrooper Bob. I mean, not a bad game. Um, I think it was a little extreme to to stop offering it for sale. Unless I'm wrong. Maybe maybe uh, I am mistaken. Maybe it's, it is still offered, but I don't think so, because I remember looking for it once on the site, and I noticed that it was not there. And I think that was the... I, I assume that's the reason why. Um... Solo Software still has a website. As far as I know, I haven't I haven't looked at it in years, but I assume they still have a website. So, anyway, let's uh, see. So we're we're getting up to the very last of the EGA games here. Um, Numlo is a twist on the classic game Othello. Again, how many Othello games do you need on one CD? I'm gonna skip that. Um, Spider Run. Oh yeah, this is basically. I think this is another Solo Software game. Uh, this is basically um, Pipe Dream. It's Pipe Dream, except instead of uh, pipes and water running through them, you have a spider uh, walking across uh, strands of spider web. Same idea, same game, basically. I think Solo Software also had Ant Run, which is, again, the same thing. Ant's running through a tunnel, and when the ant hits the end of the tunnel, he hits his head and gets upset or whatever. All right. Well, we're down to the last game here, so I'll go ahead and just quickly show this off, just because it's it's unique. This is definitely a unique game, so let's at least just take a quick look at this. Um, Stereosp. This is a game that um, I think you're actually supposed to play with... Uh, uh, how do we run this? Hold on, is that what I'm supposed to do? I guess so. Stereo Space Odyssey, press any key to continue, press any key to continue again. Do I require instructions? Let's look at the instructions. Okay, these are instructions. Um, yeah, see the stereo version of the game requires a pair of 3D glasses. So this was actually sold in a red and blue version that you could actually use with those 3D red and blue glasses to actually get a 3D effect from the game. It sounds cooler than it actually is. Uh, I don't have the the stereoscopic version of the game, but when you actually see what the what the graphics look like, you'll you'll probably agree. Do I want to re redefine the keys? I probably should because the keys are terrible in this game, but I'll say no. Um, Somewhere in Earth's orbit. I don't think this can be in Earth's orbit because a spaceship in Earth's orbit like that couldn't just suddenly stop the way that wind. All the well, I mean, a spaceship moving through space couldn't just stop on a dime like that anyway. So yeah, this is the game. You can see uh, th there's definitely a, a great appeal in seeing fantastic. Uh, thrilling graphics like this in 3D. I mean, I, I don't mind retro graphics like this. I think the graphics are okay, but I don't see what the um, what the appeal of seeing them in 3D is supposed to be. I guess the idea here is... Um, hold on, how do I move? Okay, so L is left. Um, L is left, and what else? Oh. Oh, D is down. Okay, I get it. And then, okay... D is down. Oh, oh, I see. <laughs> it actually uses the keys. 
Oh, I get it. It actually uses keys based on the the abbreviations of the words. So L is left, R is right, D is down, U is up, and then B goes backwards, and then F comes forwards like that. Okay. Uh, not a very good control scheme in my opinion, but what do I know? Oh, black hole. Game over, do you wish to play again? Yes. So basically this is like one of those choose your own adventure stories where you have no idea what's what's happening uh what's going to happen behind every page turn so it's really just a completely random thing you have at the start of the game you have three gates that you can go through here and it's complete you have no way of knowing which one takes you to a black hole and which one leads you to the next screen of the game so it's really just complete complete trial and error so okay so one so the bottom one takes you to a black hole the top one takes you to a supernova either way you're dead okay so now we know that we have to go through the middle one and i think the whole game is like this i think i never bothered to play through the game because you can see i mean the, the whole game is just this the whole game is just just complete random guesswork just just sheer luck trying to figure out whether you uh can go through something or not but okay i'm going to assume a process of elimination that i'm supposed to go through the gate in the middle here Yes, and now I, I reach Orion, and now if I try to go through the middle one again, I mean, it's probably going to kill me because I'm assuming it's, yeah, black hole. I mean, that's the whole game. Is that really something you want to register and pay money for so you can see this in 3D? I mean, do you really want to see... I mean, even I, I am, again, I'm probably the last person to complain about retro graphics in games. I like retro graphics, but does anyone re really expect people to pay money to see a few dots and squares and circles on their screen in 3D? I mean, these are just geometric shapes. How thrilling are they in 3D, quite honestly? Um, I don't know. I guess there is supposed to be a 3D effect in the fact that the gates are kind of... Um, I mean, the reason why, again, if you look at the gates in the game, the reason why some are smaller and some are bigger is not because i'm i'm assuming here actually i don't know this for a fact but i'm assuming the the deal here is the idea here is um the gate at the top is not actually smaller than the one at the bottom the reason why it looks smaller is because it's farther back so that's supposed to be the 3d effect the 3d effect is supposed to be that that we're looking at these gates like in 3d and so the one at the you know at the bottom is actually at the at the forefront and that's why it looks bigger and so maybe if you had the 3d glasses then you could actually get that kind of 3d effect and sort of see these in 3d but even so is is it really that thrilling is it really worth paying money to see three uh, monochrome rectangles in 3d seriously i mean i'm sorry i just even i uh, uh, being as much of a retro gamer as i am I'm, I'm not really willing to pay money well i'm sure it's not a lot of money but still um all right orion um let's just go ahead and one last time let's try going through here oh uh, that was correct okay now i'm in triangulum okay let's try going through the bottom one here at triangulum maybe Oh, wow. Good guess. Um, Perseus. Okay. Let's go back to the middle. We had three. Uh, so maybe now we're back to the middle path again. Oh, I guess we are. Oh, wait. I'm back at Triangulum. I was here already, wasn't I? Okay, so I guess these kind of... It's not just a linear sequence of screens. These actually kind of... It's possible to go back to where you were. So these kind of... These do kind of loop back upon themselves. So you could... Yeah, I'm back at Orion now. So you could make a map. I mean, if you wanted to, you could make a map of the different uh, of the different screens and how they connect to each other. But I mean, Aries. Uh, okay, I had a black hole. Yeah, I mean, if you really wanted to, sure, you could make a map and eventually find your way to whatever the the end goal of this game is. But I I just never bothered because somehow I don't feel like it's worth it. Maybe it maybe it is. Maybe the end goal of the game is is this really amazing sixteen million color screen of uh, of a cat riding a unicorn while eating an ice cream cone, and maybe that makes it all worth it. Maybe it actually maybe it's actually worth paying the the money for because it's all in three D, and then you see the Emoji Movie in three D, and you think, wow, this Stereo Space Odyssey game was actually worth paying money for after all. I'm glad I paid the twenty bucks or whatever it cost to see this in three D. I don't know. Somehow I think that that's not the case, though. Anyway, 
Folks, this has been the EGA Games on GameFest 2. We're done with the EGA Games. Next time, hopefully, I will begin with the VGA Games, and we'll have some fun with that, I am sure. It will be good times and good laughs and fun for all. Thanks for watching, everyone, and I will talk to you folks later. Ta-ta for now.